Greetings, fellow humans. Welcome to the Brandon Lunch Bunch. We're a group of business owners and professionals in Central Florida, and we're getting together to share tips and ideas on doing business in these stay-at-home COVID times. Online meeting services provided by A Better Choice Network Solutions. Brandon Lunch Bunch is a production of Pace Setter Media. Greetings, everybody. My name is Dave Loeb. I'm your host today. I'm going to be doing a short segment a little later on what I would tell many businesses that have been using trade shows and events for uh, their marketing in the past. Now, suddenly, they can't. Uh, and we have a, a group of panelists here. Uh, let's do some quick introductions. Yovi, please. Hi, hi everybody. Good morning. I'm Joby Fermin. I'm a realtor with Charles Rothenberg Realty. And this morning, I'm going to share five ways the COVID-19 pandemic could influence the future of home buying. Thanks. Thank you, Darren. Well, hello, everyone, and uh, thanks for having me. It's great to see everybody. What I'm seeing major questions with right now is the labor market, right? Do I need to bring back staff? Does my staff want to work for me? Can I afford my staff? Do I have to bring them back right away because of PPP? So there's so, so many critical questions around the labor market that I'm uh, excited to tackle today. My name is Darren Dennington from Service with Style, Secret Shopping and Consulting. Thanks. Thank you, and Larry. Yeah, Dave, my name is Larry Becker. I help people be better on camera in every way, not just look better on camera, but sound better and come across better. So that's what I do for a living. I actually do video production here in Central Florida, and it's changing up a little bit, and so is how we all do our meetings. So I've got some tips for you today about being better on camera. Excellent, and maybe Danielle is just getting in now as a, as a presenter. Okay, we'll we'll get back to her. Uh, oh wait, she's popping in, and this is what everybody is going through with meetings these days. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Danielle, you were just in the nick of time for your introduction, and uh, tell us what you're going to talk about today. Welcome. Oh, excellent. Uh, so first of all, I had to put real lawyer clothes on today because I had to meet with an attorney for uh, the U.S. tax court. So I got to dress like a lawyer for the first time in a couple of months, which is kind of exciting. Uh, so I'm Danielle Dryden with Dryden Tax Resolution. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about the bill that is all over the news media today, the new Heroes Act that is hopefully coming down the pike soon. Thank you. And I want to introduce our first guest. Uh, Jennifer Lopez is the incoming chair of the Brandon Chamber of Commerce. And we're going to get her up uh, first off. Uh, she is the founder and CEO of Assistant Pro. And you can find her at yourassistantpro.com. And Jennifer, welcome to the Brandon Lunch Bunch. Thank you so much for having me. What a great group. I love this. Thank you. Uh, and what are you, what are you going to? Want to talk so, about today? Yep. Yeah, today, uh, I will be uh, talking about how to utilize your local chamber of commerce to keep your business stable and to stay informed uh, as you continue to do business during these difficult times. Uh, thank you. And that would be one of my tips. Of you know, If I were to say, here, here's a tip for marketing, local groups, local chambers are still a good uh, way to network and get a, uh, make connections. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. They are. Uh, I'm sorry. My feed is cutting up just a little bit. Um, okay. If you don't mind, do, do I jump right in right now? Yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> go ahead. You can take it away. Now. Okay. Uh, great. Yes. So um, as mentioned, I am the uh, incoming 2021 uh, chairman of the board for the Brandon Chamber of Commerce. And um, the very first thing that I did as a business owner was join a chamber of commerce, not really understanding fully the benefits at the time, but I did uh, receive the benefits almost immediately from exactly what was necessary, which was the connection to other business leaders and to the type of people that I wanted to do business with, um, a community of business leaders that could help me develop my business um, and collaboration when I needed to refer business to my customers. 
more. So um, that's definitely uh, something that kicked in immediately. Right now, during these most um, uh, unpredictable times, uh, I can tell you that I have didn't really think uh, of all of the different ways that the chamber would continue to help. So um, if you have not done so already, I would highly recommend joining um, and keeping an eye out for a couple of things. So number one, um, connect with a chamber representative to um, get information on how your area is adapting and rolling out these phases. I know um, for us, because there is no you know, local municipality, we go by county and state, sometimes we're uncertain about, are we an essential business? Are we not? What does it mean to operate at capacity? The Chamber of Commerce is on these, um, yes, the Chamber is open. <laughs> the Chamber of Commerce is on these calls with state and uh, national government agencies to be able to connect members and community members with the correct information. Um, I'm sorry, I keep seeing my feed interrupted, so excuse me on that. Um, currently, the Chamber is uh, open with staff members, but we are limiting the amount of people that come in and out to keep social distancing procedures. Um, so I would recommend calling in first if there's something that you need. Um, but as mentioned earlier, it's a great way to also continue to market your business. So um, when small businesses uh, ramp up. Usually there are networking events and ways to connect. Um, and, you know, there's time that needs to be spent building a social media following. A great opportunity in partnering with the chamber is utilizing their reach. So for the Brandon Chamber, for example, we have about 4,000 uh, folks that follow us on social media. So whenever our members are getting a shout out or want to, um, send their messaging forward and still reach their audience to say, hey, we've opened or, uh, hey, this is how we're continuing to do business. It's a great outlet to continue to collaborate with. So um, that's just a couple of ways to stay connected through the chamber. Um, I know that uh, there, there are other ways to uh, continue to connect and, and actually it adds credibility to the business too. It's like a, like a city endorsement almost. So um, we are still having webinars. We have networking webinars probably four times a week to keep our business leaders connected. And um, the community engagement piece is super strong. We have folks calling in every day asking for uh, services and information on the community. And it's really just a great way to get in front of, um, of the community and your audience for business. So um, if you have any questions about um, a local chamber or the Brandon Chamber, um, we are here. We are prepared to um, you know, rethink how we're approaching business and how we're going to get our members in front of the community over the next six months. So if you're sitting at home doing it on your own, you certainly do not have to do it by yourself. Um, that's what we're here for. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Do we have uh, any questions? Yeah. Uh, what just, uh, just how can they reach the Brandon Chamber? Yeah. So reach? you can, yeah, you can go to brandonchamber.com. Um, but the fastest and probably best way is just to give the office a call um, at 813-689-1221. Uh, we have a very, a few very friendly voices on the opposite end that will take the call and see how your business is doing. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. Can you give us a quick, uh, I bet you can, quick rundown on what you do, Assistant Pro? Yes, of course. So Assistant Pro is a concierge staffing agency. We specialize in helping busy everyday families with um, repetitive tasks and chores. <laughs> so right now uh, for us, uh, our business is uh, having a little bit of a difficult time because a personal assistant business in a, an era of social distancing is not really, um, it's not conducive to business climate right now. Um, but I can tell you that we are finding ways to help virtually and still get our marketing and our messaging out um, through, you know, our, our work with the chamber. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Okay, let me do a quick check for questions. And up next, we have Danielle. Oh. 
Hello, everyone. Good morning. Hello. Hello. So uh, I have an update on new legislation that's coming down the pike. And I want to say right off the bat, this is not passed. It hasn't been voted on. There hasn't been a lot of comment. So this is uh, just slightly more than a rumor at this point. There's been a lot of media coverage, obviously, because it is um, it is something that will be very valuable to the American public. So uh, keep an eye on the news media, but do it carefully. Make sure you're listening carefully whether uh, these have been voted on, whether it's been passed, et cetera. So this is a proposed bill in the House currently. So I'm going to be, there's a lot to it. So forgive me, but I'm going to refer to notes here so that I don't misspeak because it's, like I said, it's, it's not law currently. So this is a bill that is over a thousand pages long. I think it's closer to 2000 pages long. So there is a lot of information in this bill. And I don't know that anybody has successfully covered all of it to its entirety at this point. So, and of course it's all subject to change. So um, the HEROES Act is proposing to provide nearly a trillion dollars to state and local governments who are using those funds to pay vital workers. So this is, the HEROES Act is, I think, aptly named because it's looking at getting more money and more support to super low income families and then also to those essential workers who have been working throughout this entire process to keep us safe, keep us healthy, keep food on our table, et cetera. So that's really what this fund is. Um, it's a $200 billion HEROES fund that is to ensure that essential workers who have risked their lives, quote unquote, uh, working during the pandemic are, are to receive some sort of hazard pay. Um, I haven't poured through the bill just yet to figure out exactly how they're going to determine the rate of that hazard pay, but it looks like they're just going to increase the hourly rate of those folks to $13 an hour to ensure that they're making the money that they deserve uh, because they've been working through this crazy pandemic situation and risking their lives every day. So the possibly the most important piece of this possible legislation is that they're proposing a new stimulus. So another $1,200 per person, $500 per dependent. They've changed the language a little bit since there was such an uprising with how that dependent child was calculated. Uh, so this bill proposes that is any qualified dependent on a tax return is going to be eligible to get you an additional $500. So previously in the CARES Act, it was for uh, dependents 16 years and younger. If you were 17, you didn't get that extra $500 for your dependent caretaker. So that would not be the case with this particular bill. So any qualified dependent, whether that be your college age child, your mother, your, uh, you know, your whoever, if you claim them on your tax return as a qualified dependent, they would add that additional $500. So that's, that's going to be a big deal for people. Um, it also is looking to add an additional $10 billion for the SBA, SBA uh, idle loan program. So they're not looking at expanding the PPP program at this point, but they are looking at expanding the idle loan program. Some of you may have started to receive those loans over the last couple of weeks. Those have really started to come down the pike now that things are starting to move with the SBA applications. So if you have questions about that, uh, I should have a fact sheet up hopefully tomorrow afternoon if not definitely over the weekend about idle loan and PPP proceeds and how to go about using those. Um, the bill also extends unemployment benefits. So as most of you know, there is a $600 federal unemployment benefit that has been extended uh, to people. So if you qualify for your state benefit or you don't qualify for your state benefit, you are still eligible to receive that extra $600 per week federal benefit. They're looking to extend the time period where that's offered to people. So uh, so that, that will be interesting to see how Florida handles that since they're not handling the current funds that they have been given 
uh, very well at all. But that's a whole, that's a whole other situation. So, um, the, one of the other things that people are really struggling with here in Florida right now, mostly because of the lack of a solid unemployment program is housing and food security. So evictions and all of that are scheduled to restart, I believe the end of the month now that DeSantis has expanded those. So what the bill is, is hoping to do is expand those deadlines, but also to increase uh, food security. So that would be an increase in SNAP and EBT benefits. So we'll be looking at, at those changes. So that's really the quick and dirty of the bill. Again, it's over 1800 pages. So, you know, this five minute spiel doesn't even touch on, you know, most of the stuff in the bill. So, but those are, those are kind of the highlights. So if you have questions, comments, or concerns, send them my direction. You can find me uh, on Facebook or Instagram at Dryden Tax Res. You can send an email over to info at Dryden Tax Res.com, or you can find me on my website. There's a fun chat feature as well. Dryden Tax Res.com. Thank you so much. I do want to thank you for giving us the summary of the bill and not just reading the 1800 pages to us. <laughs> of course, I'm not interested in reading the 1800 pages either. So this is really, you know, that's the quick and dirty. Thank you so much. Up next, we're going to go with Darren, then Larry, then Yovi, then back to me. So Darren, if you could, please. Well, Dave, if I may, um, let, let me just quickly start off with a, a simple thank you. You put together a great little format here. I love the, the content without chaos. and. I personally been learning a lot, right? You've uh, challenged me on OBS studios and got me doing some more squats and Danielle's been guiding me through the PPP and Larry's uh, certainly been helping me get better on camera and uh, Yovi you got me thinking about real estate and I'm excited for Jennifer today. She's got me pulled into the chamber. So this is great. So thank you. What I want to talk about for a, a few minutes is your staff. A lot of businesses are in a very strange position right now on do I hire back? Can I hire back? What, what type of plan do I have? So if I can for a minute, let, let's kind of take this into to three little quick segments. So uh, first it's your plan. And then I want to talk about the options that you have and then some communication, right? You're dealing with people here. And when I say communication, I really mean leadership, but we'll, uh, we'll title it communication. So uh, first up is the, your plan. The variables that go into your plan right now, number one is PPP. If you got it, you're on a timetable, and I, I truly hope that you're diving into all the deep de details that Danielle's talking about on the other piece. Dive into the details. You've got to understand this is a very tricky scenario on how to properly utilize the funds so that it turns into a grant instead of a loan. So uh, go on the sites and create a simple little spreadsheet of what you can spend on your utilities and your phone bill and, and then get over to your payroll. So organize the PPP so that you're getting as much back as possible and it's not gonna just happen. You've gotta take this part serious and you've really, really gotta track it. Then the next piece on the plan is, what does your organization chart look like? Whether you're bringing back three employees or you're bringing back 93 employees. Prior to this, a lot of businesses that we dealt with, primarily in the hospitality industry, were struggling on the employee side. We had a 3.4% unemployment. Basically what that meant in my world is you hired anybody that came in your door. And the, the industry joke is, wow, you have black shoes and you'll start tomorrow, you're hired. So that's what we want to get away from. And you, you've got to understand your organization chart. A lot of businesses get set into too many dollars into their staff up front and they don't have the ability to, to pull back. You've got the chance to hit the reset button. And what that means is you need a costed out schedule. You need a budget for your labor. So understand where the dollars are going uh, before they even go out and then take a look at your options. And this is the, the really strange, tricky piece. A lot of places are starting to interview and there's, there's some movement. What we're seeing is the people that have their current jobs are not confident that they're still going to remain in those. So there's a lot of people starting to look. There's because where the unemployment today is 14.7, uh, 
we have a lot of different options that people are going to be looking for. But then you throw the variable in of, I want to stay on unemployment. I don't want to go back to work. So you may have some of your great employees that just don't want to come back. So the whole market is, is changing. Focus on options, right? Get some different conversations going. Start talking to some people. Talk to the good employees that you have. Make sure that you are uh, got them on board and they're excited about where you're going. And spread your wings, right? If you're bringing back 10 or 12 employees, then do some great interviews and get creative. Start them on video and, and understand that there's a lot of really, really good people going to be looking for new jobs. And the, the last part is that communication, right? As uh, good leaders, you should be talking to your staff, making sure that they understand where you're going as a business. They understand that it's challenging, but when they hear it from their, their boss, their, their team leader, it sets in a, a little bit of confidence that at least I understand what we're doing and it makes sure that the updates are, are continual. And then you got to get into the training mode. So bringing back your new staff, whether you had a great employee handbook before or you're redefining it now, you've got a lot of new policies, a lot of new procedures. And with all the new cleaning procedures, that's going to wear off quick, right? We don't do things for a, a real long time. So leadership and communications is going to have to hold the staff to a higher level of new policies and procedures. Take some time, focus on your staff, and good luck with, uh, with reopening. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Mr. Becker. Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah, so thank you. Up to you. <laughs> yeah, so what I want to do is uh, talk very briefly about one of the most important things, and that is subliminal communication. We all know it in person, but these days everybody's jumping on video. We're having video meetings. And there's communication that is nonverbal. And we experience this in real life. I mean, when you're face to face with somebody, if they're ignoring you and constantly looking at their phone and just not paying attention to you, you go, well, I'm not having a good communication with this person. And you, you know that those kinds of things happen in interpersonal communications. Well, they're also telegraphed when you're on video. So one of the things that I see a lot of people do on video is not look at their camera because they want to look at their computer monitor because they want to see the presenters that are talking and what have you. That's a very natural thing. Unfortunately, we have to go against our nature. And in order to look like we're connecting better, we have to look at our camera. So right now I'm looking at my camera and my monitor is a couple inches below where my camera is. So that's one thing. You want to look at the camera as much as possible. It takes a little practice, but do look straight into your camera. Next thing is put your camera at eye level. Put it up higher than you think. I'm coaching people on this a lot. And unfortunately, one of the problems is, and I'll, and I'll show you an example of this, people have a tendency to put their camera below them. And so you end up looking up their nose. This is not good. This is not a good thing for anybody that is not visiting the ENT, your nose and throat doctor. I don't want to look up your nose. I don't want to look at the bottom of your chin. And this is where almost everybody who doesn't go out of their way to actually learn this stuff, that's where we put our camera is nice and low. And the reason is because that's where the laptop sits. It sits on the desk. So what you have to do is get books, a big stack of books, and really get that camera up to eye level. You want to be able to hold a string straight from your eyes, straight to the camera. You really want to be eye level. So that will help you make better eye contact and communicate better with your audience. So look right at the camera, have the camera at eye level. And the next thing is make sure your eyes are well lit. What that means is you don't want all your lighting to come straight from overhead. If that's the case, then you end up with raccoon eyes, really dark eye sockets. That's not a good look either. So make sure that there's some really bright light over near where your camera is on your face. So your face is well lit. So today it's all about the eyes, eye level, eye contact, well lit eyes. That's all I got for today, guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate your tips. I'm going to be talking about tech too. It's going to follow up right up on that. And Yovi, if you could please.
awesome tips about looking at the camera. I'll take some of those myself. <laughs> okay, well, this uh, morning I want to discuss about how COVID-19 could change the buyer next purchase. Uh, with everything that is going on with COVID-19, this scare and economic shock will definitely leave a lasting mark on how people buy and sell homes. So here are five ways the COVID-19 pandemic could influence the future of home buying. Uh, number one, your next home may be in the suburbs, not downtown. For example, if you are in a downtown high rise, um, it will be hard to socially distance in an elevator where people might cough or sneeze. On the other hand, in the suburbs, you can pull into your driveway and go straight into your house, making it easier to socially distance. Also, as more people telecommute, living in the suburbs will make more sense because they will not have to deal with the daily office drive. Um, number two, uh, you might be renting for a while. We, we paychecks shrinking, um, unable to qualify for a mortgage. More people may have to pause home ownership and rent rather than taking on the financial commitment that is that involves buying a home. Um, number three, you may want a bigger home. Uh, before COVID-19, most people spend their time outside of the home, going to work, going to school, et cetera. But now that they're spending most, if not all of their time, at home, they might be feeling their home a little cramped. And a home office space just got a lot more important, which will make, which will be, <clears throat> excuse me, which in the future, an office requirement um, will be something that buyers are going to definitely look into it, especially if you're going to have more than one person working from home. Um, number four, you may seek a second home. In, these are for those who have the financial means, the wealthy. Um, owning a second home probably looks more appealing right now. Um, in typical times, people who to, uh, wanted to flee the city um, could rent vacation home, Airbnb, or hotels by the beach. Well, the pandemic closed out those options. So people are going to be looking at a second home. Um, and number five, you are going to rely more on technology in the home buying process. Um, in recent years, real estate transactions um, have grown more virtual. However, COVID-19 acceler accelerated the process. Um, although nobody expects virtual tools to replace buyers getting physically acquainted with their future homes or replace the physical walkthroughs, the paper-heavy transaction process has moved toward a more virtual process, making remote transactions, electronic signatures, and virtual closing more a more common process. So we'll see what happens in the near future. Uh, something we know for sure, the market is always changing. And that's my segment for today. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I want to talk about what I would say to businesses, especially businesses that have used events and personal selling uh, uh, up till now, that either do trade shows or that go to networking events. Let me get my tech set up right quick. And that's the first thing I want to talk about, embrace tech. Like it or not, here we are. Whatever we did, uh, two and three months ago, you know, with online meetings, a lot of people didn't care, didn't use them. Here we are. Now is the time. Uh, we're all in meetings. And I say embrace tech. It, it's not necessarily uh, every level of tech, but at least this camera here and this microphone here, get it. Get used to it. Know that you and your company now has to do this type of, of uh technology because now you're a publisher now i've been telling people this for 20 years when i've helped people do websites as soon as you start uh, a website you're a publisher you're publishing something um, and and even if you just publish something on facebook you share something on facebook your company is publishing and that is to say your company has a publishing function just like it has an accounting function now you don't always uh, you have uh, uh, use a CPA. That might be once a month, once a quarter. You work with a CPA, especially small companies. Bigger companies have an entire department on accounting. 
but you have an accounting function within the company. You also have a publishing function. Even if that's just sharing something on Facebook for a small one person operation, you're publishing. Everybody has a website. You're a publisher. And it helps to think that way. Know that you have a publishing function within your company. And here, with this technology and this type of publishing, you are, in essence, doing a performance. Uh, and I'm not in essence, you are doing a performance. Larry was talking earlier about one of the techniques, look at the camera, it's part of the performance. Just like learning to play an instrument or learn to drive a, a car, more, a better analogy is that first time you went out to a networking group and you did a 30 second or one minute uh, sales talk, that was a performance. You weren't that good at it. You probably practiced it before you before you did it. You at least thought through what you were going to do. Same thing here. Practice this. This is a performance, one sense or another, just like any, uh, any sales presentation you've ever done. So practice it. Embrace the tech. Embrace the practice. We are in a grace period now. Uh, people don't expect everything to be perfect. Everybody has some tech issues. Things pop in and out. Every you know, it's a grace period. People people allow for mistakes and imperfections. Somewhere along the way, in maybe six months, the business world will come up with some basic professional standards, basic production level standards uh, that you that will be expected in meetings. And I'm not talking a Hollywood level slick and Hollywood production standards, just some basic level standards like high level microphones, lighting decent, uh, backgrounds are cleaned up a little bit. Um, when that time comes, be ready for it. Practice now. Give your employees time to practice. Realize that you have to get the tech. You have to accept the fact that you're publishing this video out to the world. Uh, and that it is in one way or another a performance. So practice, practice your performance, practice how you uh, get things done. And here I am practicing, trying to get back to my software so I can turn that off. <laughs> and that's something you have to practice too, where to click. And only to the degree that you're using the tech. If, if you're not using the lower third or the over the shoulder graphics, you don't need to practice it. You at least need to practice looking at the camera, that part of the tech. And that's my tip this week. Embrace the tech, practice the performance. That's where we're all at now. And that wraps up our uh, Brandon Lunch Bunch this week. I do want to finish, of course, with the reminder. As soon as you get up, as soon as we're done here, get up and do some exercises, do some stretching, go walk around the block. I've been working at home for 20 years. It's easy to sit at the computer too long if you're working at home. Make sure you get up and get some activity more than you usually would. Please do that as soon as we're done here. And the next, Brandon Lunch Bunch. Be one week from today. It's the 21st. There it is. Next Brandon Lunch Bunch is May 21st. We'll see you then. Thank you so much for joining us.